It's been a long time coming, but finally it's time to start working on my car, and I absolutely can not wait. <laughs> This is my 2002 Fiat Cicento Sporting, a car that I love for a great many reasons, including the way it looks, with one exception, and that's the wheels. Not the style of the wheels themselves, I love those little 13s, but the colour just doesn't seem right on a predominantly yellow and black car. Look here, yellow, black, and silver taking the edge off of the styling. Same at the back, black, yellow, and silver. I like the look of these wheels, but I just don't think that silver was the right colour decision for them. So since it's such an easy and cheap mod to do, I figured that changing the colour of those brilliant little wheels should be the very first mod that I make. A process that begins with jacking the car up so we can get the wheels off. On our sloped driveway it's also important that we chock the rear wheels, and unfortunately since it's not possible to get a jack underneath it on a slope, we're going to have to put a spare wheel on so that we can stand it back down on the driveway. We begin with me getting the spare wheel out of the boot to replace one of the front wheels with and my dad getting the driver's side front wheel off. With the spare on the front driver's side we then move around to the passenger side and using an extending tyre iron I use all my strength to undo the nuts. But eventually... With my dignity a little bit dented, we've got the two front wheels off and it's time to prep them for painting. A process that begins with a little lesson on paint prep from my dad. Actually, it's not big shine on it. This will hold me if you just go over it lightly like that. I try not to go through the paint too thin. Just smooth. Are you pressing heavily with that or are you? Black hand, just... And that, that really is what you want. You see that? Yeah. You can feel it as well. It's oh, it's yeah. like, oh, it's glass. That's a rough texture. That's like glassy smooth. Yeah. yeah. Not the shine off of it all over. Yeah. While Dad goes off to get one of the tyres changed, I'm left on my own to prep the wheels. So, next bit of the process is to just flat things down. And the advice I've been given by my dad is just to knock it back. We're using Scotch Bright. We do like a bit of Scotch Bright. And this is just to take the shine off, in essence. We're going to give it sort of a glassy finish and this is all about it because painting is all about prep and if you don't get this bit right the end result will look terrible this is not going through to the metal remember so I've just got to be super super careful I want to prep my wheel I don't want to destroy it because if I go through to the metal in some areas but don't in others we're going to end up with an uneven finish and that is going to look revolting this is just knocking back the shine effectively just to make the wheel look a little bit, actually it's one of these things you have to get it worse before it gets better and you can kind of feel because it starts to feel sort of smooth, the metal feels a bit smoother when it's been knocked back a bit, you need to get the whole wheel feeling like that. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to properly rub down a wheel and before too long, that looks actually really good, we've gone through that quite nicely. Let's see if we can show, can you see very carefully these little sort of lines cut into the paint? That is spot on right there. Next up, it's out the back with the trusty airline to blow off all the dust and crap on the wheel that would prevent the paint from sticking properly. And if you can't quite see the dust and rubbish flying off that would ruin the final paint finish, let's get a slow motion replay. Ooh, dusty. Tiny little extra bits now make big differences later on. And it's using the little airline here, handy airline, to blow all the dust and our crap out. Then we can expose just the metal itself. Then it's back out the front with a roll of masking tape to mask up the tyre and the air pressure valve. This isn't particularly time consuming or difficult, but it's crucial because if you don't do it, you're going to get paint on your tyre and that is going to look disgusting. Take particular note of the fact that I'm even bothering to mask up the gap between the rim and the tyre itself so we don't end up with an ugly coloured circle round our freshly painted wheels. This doesn't look particularly interesting on camera, but it's actually quite calming and quite relaxing once you get into it. And before too long you can go from this to this, a rubbed down, cleaned, masked up and fully prepped wheel that is ready to be painted. So the prep stage is done, I've done the masking, I've done the rubbing down, the wheels are ready to be painted and I've chosen satin black paint, the reason being matte black, I don't think it was very good on a wheel, I think it looks unfinished, it's like there should be lacquer but there wasn't, you couldn't be bothered or you just didn't get around to it or whatever and I don't like gloss black wheels because it doesn't matter what colour the car is, gloss black wheels attract every fibre of dirt in the known universe. So I've gone for satin black for a little bit of shine to give a nice look and it should contrast well with the yellow on the car and fit well with the satin black trim 
on other parts of the car like the side trims and the bumpers. Having put a fleece on to protect myself from the cold, I watched my dad paint the wheel on the left, practiced a little bit on a piece of cardboard and then it was time for me to take up the spray can and have a go myself. The base layer of paint needs to just be light with short, sharp shots that cover all of the visible silver. Don't worry if it doesn't look very good when it dries, you're going to be putting more coats on later anyway. I didn't get too much footage of the following three layers being put on, but it's important to get slightly thicker and slightly closer with each subsequent coat so you can build up thick and tough paint that should last long into the future. But don't get too close or too thick because otherwise you might well get runs and that means you'll have to rub it back and practically start all over again and no one wants to do that. If you are painting outside like we are, make sure to have some kind of protection around you so that the wind doesn't blow your paint everywhere and all over everything in the entire building. Three to four coats of paint is ideal for a wheel because it means it's tough and durable but not excessive and it won't waste your time or your paint. We allowed around 10 minutes between each coat to give the paint time to harden and once we'd done the final coat we gave it around half an hour to dry. And after that drying time we get this. Perfectly painted wheels that can then be demasked ready to be put back on the car. And this demasking is quite satisfying isn't it? Really gives you an idea of what the wheels now look like and oh they do look good. Demasking complete, it's now time for the finishing touch. Finally, the wheels can go back to the car, be refitted and then have the nuts loosely done up while the car's still off the ground. And here's a quick tip, a bit of masking tape around the socket prevents the paint being scratched while the nuts are being done up. Brilliant! With all the nuts loosely done up, we can lower the car back down, tighten the nuts up with the tyre iron, and then, finally, we can see what it looks like. Yep, the car looks fantastic. Black wheels give a sportier, more aggressive look and I think really well complement the existing black and yellow on the car. The paint finish itself is also brilliant and a big thanks to my dad for all his help, advice and expertise. So after an afternoon spent on the driveway, the wheels are done and I have to say I think it looks fantastic. Ever since I got this car, this is one thing that I just felt needed to be done and I couldn't be happier with the results. The car looks more purposeful, it looks more aggressive, it just looks way better now that we've got the yellow and the black colour scheme going on throughout the whole car. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to click that subscribe button for more videos in the Super Sargento series as soon as they're released and I'll be back with you very soon with some more big, big mods for this brilliant little car. Thanks once again for watching everybody and have a brilliant rest of your day. Have a good one.